Hello and welcome to Bam to Racket Review and to the final part of this 2019 test session. So we have with us today the Apex Asgardia. What a racket this is. This is quite an exciting racket to talk about actually. But before we go on to that, uh, a couple of notifications. If you've watched any of our uh, other 2019 videos, you already know what I'm going to say. The E-Zone. The E-Zone is changing. We are currently developing the E-Zone. Um, some of the new features will include a search function within the E-Zone. The scoring has changed. We've added more tests. So not only the E-Zone objective testing, but also the court testing, which is subjective. And we've collaborated those two scores to give an overall score for the racket. Um, which will give an even deeper understanding of any racket you're looking to purchase or are interested in buying. It will give you a real deep understanding. We think it's going to be good for all of our subscribers and supporters around the world. Um, also, you'll notice that the control test is no longer done where we used to do a drop shot and the, the shuttle landed into a bucket and we scored. We now do the control test on court. Two players assessing the racket for control from various different positions on the court and giving us an overall score. So they're the main changes um, affecting the E-Zone. If you're not familiar with the E-Zone, you, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. The E-Zone, there is a link below on how to use the E-Zone. That will give you an idea of what the E-Zone is and how to use it. Um, it is essentially a platform for comparing BAM to racket performance and it goes into really deep, deep analysis and there's nothing else quite like it ever before or currently uh, in the world of badminton. You can find the E-Zone details uh, on the link below and also if you go to our website www.badmintonracketreview.co.uk you will find it all there. Lastly, the format of this video is changed from what you're used to seeing. We're going to talk about the price, availability, the product specification according to the manufacturer, according to the E-Zone testing, the design and then we will conclude on what we think of this racket. And then, if you're still interested in seeing the E-Zone testing, the smash shot and maneuver shot only now, as the control test is not done, then stay tuned and that will all come up later. And the idea of changing the format of the video is so we can get to the point a little bit quicker because we've had some moaning about how we extend the videos out too far. So we're trying to address that. Thank you for that feedback. So the Apex Asgardia, price roughly 49 pounds. UK availability, uh, you can go to this link here uh, below which is www.badminton-racket-review.com I haven't seen this available in the UK or, in, or Europe I've seen the Asgardia Lite uh, this is not the Asgardia Lite this is just the Asgardia so I don't know if there is a difference or not but I don't want to say it's the same racket um, so the Asgardia Lite like I said is available via the link below at our website or if you use if you go to Badminton Bay uh, enter this a uh, discount code uh, at your checkout. You should get a discount from them. It's better to use Badminton Bay if you are in Asia. Um, Badminton Bay is a Malaysian company, as is Apex, so they are the primary um, Apex suppliers um, in that in Malaysia, and and they can easily ship to any parts of Asia. Okay, so availability, therefore, we've made it a bit easier for you now. You can get hold of this racket if you're really interested in it. Um, let's talk about the specs of this racket. Let's go into the E-Zone page and look at what specs we have here. So, the weight of this racket, according to the manufacturer, is seven. It's a 7U racket, 73 grams, plus or minus 2 grams. The E-Zone te weight test... So the grip supplied by Apex, Yonix BG65 string, weighs in at 79.2 grams. Um, the balance point of this racket balances at 298 plus or minus 3. Okay, so it's slightly bearing towards the head. The E-zone testing for balance point shows it to be significantly more bearing towards the head at 310. Um, so it's definitely a head heavy racket. It makes complete sense. I mean, a, a racket that weighs 79.2 grams, you're going to have to have some weight bearing in this direction. Otherwise, how are you going to get any kind of power out of it? So it makes complete sense. Um, according to um, Apex, the flex is 9.0.
I don't know what that means. Okay, I don't know what that means. Okay, our, our own uh, flex test shows this to be a quite a flexible shaft. It flexes quite easily uh, without too much issue. So it's a flexible shaft. Um, other information that you will find helpful on this racket as Guardia is maximum string tension as you can see clearly advertised at the top and quite often they put it onto the shaft they have it on this one 35 pounds that's insane isn't it 35 pounds maximum tension on a racket that weighs less than 80 grams is pretty insane now this racket is actually produced in Taiwan it's designed and developed uh, in Taiwan there's a real quality feel to this racket. Don't think you're getting a substandard product. It is really nicely made. Um, don't have a grip size and we don't have any information on what they've used to manufacture this racket. Other little bits of information on here that you might find helpful. It says here that the uh, shaft is 6.8 mil in diameter and the head is fiber reinforced polymer. I assume there's other materials used in other parts of the racket. Low vibration shaft as well, and that's pretty much everything there is to tell you about the racket and its spec. Now, in terms of design, the Asgardia is uh, really well designed. It's got this sort of matte grey background, and it's infused with uh, graphics. That <laughs> graphics are almost. Avengers like um, I'm not sure if the Asgardia you know where they've taken their inspiration from it's actually really well delivered it's nice it's a nice looking racket um, take a look at the closer pictures and see what you think of the design for yourself Okay, so how does this racket perform? That's what you really want to know. Um, we can tell you that uh, the racket, let me just go through here, get onto another sheet. There's so much information, honestly, it's difficult to direct myself sometimes. So look, when you're using this racket, you can already assume it's very, very light. It feels really light to use, really easy, very, very, very fast in the air. Um, and I would say that when you're using the racket, it doesn't feel overly flexible. It feels medium flex to use the racket. You don't feel like it's overly flexing. Um, it's uh, not a, uh, what it doesn't do massively well, it doesn't produce huge smashes. Um, it produces okay smashes. Um, what it is good at, as you might expect it to be good at, is it does produce very good it has very good defensive qualities it's good if you get yourself into drives it's so quick you you know you have no you when you're driving with this racket you can feel like you can drive and just walk forward walk bang 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 it feels amazing in that respect um, it also um, offers a reasonable level of control um, and uh, even if you're worried that uh, you know it's such a light racket how is it going to be to use the overhead shots with this racket it's actually quite nice to use overhead overhead shots with um, it's not too bad at all I found it to be quite a pleasurable racket to use uh, even though it's lightweight as long as you can get past the fact you're not going to be hitting huge bombs uh, you can certainly get good snaps you know if you're moving you're moving, your opponent's moving you just want to snap the shuttle down and keep staying control of the rally uh, it's really good at doing that kind of stuff if you're at the net you're Kevin Sanjaya Sukumulia, you want to boom, boom, boom. You want to try to get those blocks in. Really good for that kind of stuff. Decent level of control. 100% thumbs up for this racket, especially at this price point. Really well made. Decent levels of performance. And by the fact that it doesn't hit that that hard, it does a lot of other things really, really well. I have to say, really, really well. Fast in the air fast to use, really capable racket, 
I would certainly give it a try. Obviously, the issue you're going to have is at £49. We're directly in the Abroz Arena at that price, and therefore it goes straight up against the Hammerhead. It goes straight up against the Venom and the Nano 9900 and the Force Light. Uh, all of those are extremely capable rackets. Um, but they are at a different weight point. They're slightly heavier, uh, apart from the Abroz Force Light. Um, so if it's real lightweight, worth a try. If you want to get a little bit heavier, 83 grams, 86 grams, something like that, then you need to go to the Hammerhead, go to the Nano 9900, the Abroz Venom, they're slightly heavier than this. Um, they do make a claim on here that this is the world's lightest racket, or I think they're trying to say they produce some of the world's lightest rackets. They do. Uh, Apex do. I just went on to the Racket Review E-Zone, went into the filter, popped in Manufacture Apex, pressed Filter, and I can tell you that the Featherweight X is the lightest racket produced by Apex that we have tested at 64.4 grams. So there's only a, one other Kampu racket, the 10U, that is lighter than that and officially the lightest racket in the world, but they have had some quality issues with that racket. So uh, I hope that's helpful to you. I hope that's given you an idea of how this racket plays. Um, uh, the specs should certainly tell you whether or not this racket will work for you or not. Um, before I go on to the E-Zone testing, I just want to thank you again for your support, for the love, for the sharing, for the comments, for the feedback. We could do with the E-Zone members leaving more feedback in the E-Zone. Please start doing that. It's a real, it's really helpful for people to see what other people have experienced with the racket, not just only have our opinion to rely on. Same with the YouTube channel. If you're going to go out and buy this Asgardia, if you're going to go out and buy that Abra's Hammerhead, leave a review of what you thought of it. Did you actually find you can get a crazy big smash out of it? I didn't, but did you? It doesn't matter if your opinion is different. It's important that you just express your opinion, providing it's helpful to other people. So please do that. Start writing your opinions. Leave little reviews for people to read. Um, I think that's going to be extremely helpful. Uh, you don't always get people responding to your reviews, but you'll be surprised how many people actually read them. So don't, don't be off put by the fact that no one said anything about your reviews because you know, for us it's hard because there's so many comments on so many different videos constantly coming in. We do miss some comments, um, uh, YouTube malfunctions sometimes you, in the comments that we see appear, you try to reply and they just disappear. So um, thank you so much for the support, thank you so much for sharing, keep liking, keep sharing and we will see you on the next video. Now, for those of you who are staying uh, and want to know more about the E-Zone, uh, we're going to go now to the E-Zone smash test and maneuver test. Previously, we would also do a control test, but as I've already said, that has now changed. Now, what you should know about the E-Zone is we use the same shuttles when we test on the E-Zone. We use the Yonex AS30 for all of our tests. All of our rackets are restrung using Yonex BG65 string at 25 pounds of tension, and we have the same player doing all of our testing. Now the smash and maneuver test are six shots, six shots carried out. If we are happy with how those shots have gone, then we take a recording of the highest shuttle speed for the smash test and the highest head speed for the maneuver test. We take the two highest scores, we average those out, and that gives us for the smash test a smash speed and smash score. And for the maneuver test, we get a maneuver score and speed. Here are the tests of the Asgardia taking place. As soon as those tests are done, we will be signing out from this video for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Here are the Smash and Maneuver tests. We'll see you on the next video.